Welcome back to STEM class! Today we're going to build something, so I want you to think about some strong building materials. Hmm, pause the video, take a minute and think of at least three building materials that we make stuff out of. Okay, maybe you thought of things like bricks, or wood, or stone, or concrete, or maybe metal, or plastic. Those are all pretty strong. Paper was probably not on your list. It's useful, but it's kind of floppy, and if it gets wet, say goodbye to your paper. But it can be stronger than you might think. Today we'll explore how we can make paper stronger. I want to make a platform or a bridge for this Rubik's Cube out of paper. Now, if we try this with just a piece of paper, it doesn't work. The paper is not stiff enough to hold up the Rubik's Cube. We could try a lot of pieces of paper. Let's see if that will work. Oh, almost, but not quite. How can we make the paper stiff enough to hold up the Rubik's Cube? Maybe we could fold the paper. I'm going to fold this in half one time. Notice it's half as big, but now there's two layers here. So can these two layers hold up the cube? No. What if I fold it again? Hmm. How many layers do you think we have now? We used to have two, and now we have one, two, three, four layers. Can that hold it? No. What if we fold it in half again? How many layers do you think we'll have? We had one layer, then we folded it in half and got two layers. We folded it in half again and got four layers. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight layers. So it doubled every time. Every time we folded it, the number of layers doubled. And eight layers is enough to hold up this Rubik's Cube. Do you remember when we talked about strong triangles last year? Triangles are a strong shape that can hold a lot of weight. So let's try making some triangles. I taped this triangle. It's just some paper folded in thirds. Let's see, do you think this can hold up? How would I even put this? I don't know how to put a cube on top of this triangle. I don't think that'll work. What if we have more than one triangle? Hmm, here's another one. And here's another one. Now can we put this on? It might stay if I hold it. That's not good enough. Maybe we need a lot of triangles. So I'm going to fold this paper in a way that's called an accordion fold. The way that works is we fold over a small strip. The exact size doesn't matter, but you want to keep it the same size the whole time. Now we're going to fold it back the other way, the same size. So see, I'm lining up the fold with this edge. Now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Line up this fold with this edge. And we keep going back and forth. They call it an accordion fold because it looks like an accordion. So now, what do you notice when you look at this on the edge? Lots of triangles. Let's see if this will do a better job of holding up our Rubik's Cube. Mm, it's just one piece of paper, but it's holding up the cube just because of the way we folded it. Hmm. I wonder if it would also go this way. Uh, probably not. <laughs> so notice the folds are the strong parts, so they need to go across the gap. Now, there's lots of other shapes we could try, like maybe some cylinders. Oh, that's another way to make the paper strong. So what can we conclude from these experiments? If we want paper to be stiffer, we need a way to spread out the weight of our cube across more of the paper. This way here, you spread the weight out. If we do it just one piece of paper, it does not spread the weight out. All the weight goes in here, and it's so slidey it just falls across. So folds make it more stiff so it can stay up. Your STEM challenge for today is to build a bridge out of paper that can hold as many pennies as you can. You can use up to five pieces of paper. If you want to use a little bit of tape just to hold your paper together, that's fine, but we're not going to make our bridge out of tape. Now, if you don't have pennies, you can use 
pebbles or beans or toy cars or any other small weight, something that you have a lot of so that you can measure which one is better. In addition to your paper and your weights, you're going to need some kind of platform that you can raise up your paper. It could be like stacks of books or blocks or boxes, whatever you have around. Set up your platform so they're about five inches apart. First, see how many of your weights you can hold up with just a plain piece of paper. Probably not very many, but you want to make sure your bridge is at least better than that. You can try several different kinds of bridges. You can measure which bridge is best by seeing how many weights it can hold. I want you to take a picture of your strongest one and post it in Seesaw or Google Classroom, along with how many weights it could hold. I hope you have fun experimenting with different bridges. Stay safe, have fun, and keep building.